Hi, it's Jared O'D here, Director of Training for Dynamis, and today I wanted to take a few moments of your time to explain a little bit about our self-defense trainer course, which we run on an annual basis. Now, this course is a fantastic blend of a number of different approaches. Uh, for myself, I teach personal safety, conflict management, and physical interventions all over the UK and internationally based on my experience of doing BTEC Level 3 courses with the National Federation of Personal Safety here in the UK. And uh, I bring that level of experience to this trainer course. Now, my colleague, uh, Coach Tony Torres, comes in from the US. Uh, Coach Torres has experience as uh, a security operative in the US Navy. He was a long time uh, police officer in uh, Virginia Beach. And he also operated as a, a close protection uh, detail operative in Iraq during the very early days and was part of the Bremer detail. Now, Coach Torres spent about 10 years teaching uh, combatives and physical uh, self-protection tactics to police and military units and specialist teams all over the world. And uh, he first uh, came to the UK to do one of these courses with us in 2011. And uh, we had such a great experience with that. Uh, Coach Torres has been back every year since then. Uh, we'll be running our fifth uh, self-protection trainer course with him in 2015. And uh, I wanted to spend a little, few minutes of this video just talking about uh, the, the types of things that we'll be going over on that course. Now, one of the things that we produced year on year for our trainer course is a full manual of the physical system that we teach called Functional Edge System. Um, this manual here that you're looking at on the left hand side, it's, uh, it's had three or four evolutions so far, but uh, it's about 70 pages of physical uh, drills and exercises to develop the various skills that we're looking for from somebody on a self-protection course. And uh, that's provided to all the trainers who come on our course. On the right hand side of this slide right here, you can see some of the advanced material that we cover. Now, I'll talk about this a little bit later on again, but we have uh, advanced modules that returning trainers who've done the initial course with us can come back and continue to progress their information, their level of knowledge and skill. They can do, as you can see here, uh, perhaps a specific module on knife protection or a specific module on restricted positions and so on. And that's been extremely popular these last few years. Now, core material on our course is something we call the nine attitudes for self-protection. It's absolutely really useful for the trainers who are going on to design and deliver their own courses. The nine attitudes consist of a number of different phases that somebody might pass through during a personal safety situation or incident. And what you can see here is sort of pre-incident uh, issues that they might have to be aware of at various uh, psychological stages that they might have to pass through. And in the middle, the survival reversal engagement phase is really where it gets physical. So if we've, if we've failed to prevent a situation from escalating, then we are gonna have to survive it. We're gonna have to reverse that situation and perhaps engage with our attacker in order to escape or in order to control them or in very rare circumstances in order to harm that person. We'll point you at various different um, resources that are available out there in the world to increase your ability to teach awareness to your students. I think a lot of uh, trainers just say to their students to be more aware, but there is material out there that we can point you at that will help you to actually teach people to be more aware. We'll go through body language signals with you. Uh, this is material that I use extensively with care workers. Uh, this has to do with broadcasting the right kind of signals to somebody in the preventive attitude stage, but also being in a good position to move if and when one has to. Instinctive movement forms a really core part of our course because in observing many, many uh, physical confrontations on video and in our own uh, experiences, we know that things happen so fast and that people are pressurized and under stress. And after the collisions that happen during a physical confrontation, what we observe a lot of is this instinctive movement, this reflexive level movement. And one of the ways we elicit that in our training sometimes 
is to put on the full gear that you can see the guys in this picture using and then run scenarios at full speed. Now, some people might be looking at this, uh, these pictures with the guys working in gear and be a little bit intimidated by perhaps the level of intensity that we might get to on our trainer course. Uh, the trainer course is not designed really to put you under this kind of intense pressure and do scenarios right from the beginning. Our purpose on the course is to teach you a system that will allow you to gradually bring your students to a point where you could potentially safely put gear into your training sessions and ramp up the intensity. And I thought I'd spend a moment just talking about scenarios and what we mean by scenarios. What you can see in this picture is a group uh, that I ran some time ago where we had a, I think it was an attempted mugging type scenario that we ran. But you can see this is quite a complex environment. There's poles, there's mats on the floor. We even put a punch bag on the floor there to simulate an obstacle. And the overriding objective for this person in the scenario was to get to safety. You can see that they're running for the door at the back of that room. So our objective for our students is to make them effective and to make their performance the best it can be given all the different things that are going on in a self-defense scenario. One of the ways that we bring a self-defense instructor to the level where they can consistently and at a very high quality deliver that kind of experience for our training, uh, our students, is to run the advanced programs that we have uh, which are attached to each and every course that we do. So returning trainers who want to progress, who want to learn more about tactics or they want to get deeper in some of the other issues involved can actually get that additional information every time we run one of our courses. There's space for returning instructors to get advanced material. So just to give you an idea, we've uh, held courses on restricted positions, where, about confined spaces and about bad situations that a person might get into and how they can use the environment, for example, to get out of that. We've done knife protection fundamentals courses. This is one of our most popular courses for the returning trainers. The guys absolutely love this one. Um, in 2012, we ran a ground fighting advanced instructor course, which was again, simple about how to survive, reverse and engage if you're knocked to the floor and the person is on top of you or trying to keep you there. We ran a multiple assailants course in 2011, which had to do with the, the geometry and the mobile collisions that happened during a multiple assailant incident. And that again was very well received. Altogether, our trainers have a really good time on our courses and uh, we have a fantastic community developing of almost 50 trainers now across the UK. If you'd like to join us uh, or you're interested in learning more about the course, uh, then please get in touch. Uh, you can become a qualified self-protection instructor on this course and you can earn a vocational qualification. To get started, just give us a call. Give our office a call here on this number. It's 0844 812 9795 or you can email us using uh, the email link that's close by to this on your screen right now. We'd love to hear from you. We'll answer any questions you have and get you started. Thanks for listening to this video and I hope to talk to you soon.